Good morning all. Looking at the 8-bit breadboard computer, it's not really a computer yet, it's just some RAMs, some uh, displays and latches and write switches and so it's a system where you can write data into the RAMs and then sequence through it. It doesn't actually do any computations yet because it hasn't got an ALU. But um, I can see immediately there's something here that's not necessary. This double display um, had some MC14495s, which are the hex to seven segment decoders in here. And I've obviously pulled them out, probably to build this little module. This little module, if you remember, uh, has the MC14495s up the top there under the displays, a binary display, as well as this hexadecimal display, a buffer so that it doesn't really present any load on the circuit, and a separate power supply. So it's pretty neat. Let's plug that back in and uh, plug that into a bus bar and power this thing on. So I've got my pos and neg here and I'm just going to put it on the side where it's kind of most accessible. That's neg there. Anyway, it all works. Ah, it's actually sequencing through something which happens to have a write to, no, a read zero. Because there's the read address decoder. There's the zero line coming out of it and that LED is flashing on and off. So yeah, it's doing something exciting. And this is showing that FB is in that latch for whatever reason, but I don't need this. So I'm gonna take all this out because it's just not necessary. Let's get all these wires out and these two displays. I'm having some major issues with this. If I flex this, you can see that this is going from well lit to really quite dim and I know what this is this is power distribution that's really dim there so let's that um, takes its positive I think there yeah so that's positive is very close by but negative here has a bit of a route to follow so let's try putting negative on the display which is there straight into negative on the power supply and that actually is a lot better this one's really bright this one's pretty dim now is that negative that's the problem here once again let's try routing negative that the display wants which is there that's gone brighter immediately i've just touched it up to the nearest negative well if i touch it on there well that's just gone brighter anyway but they're much brighter now so the problem on here is power distribution. Power distribution on here is an absolute nightmare, particularly for the high current devices, which are the displays. So maybe if I use displays like this, and these are good because they're hexadecimal and binary, in these positions, I wouldn't have so many issues. Let's try that actually. Let's take this one out, which should make this one go dodgy dim. If I press down on bits of the, yeah, it's kind of flickering a bit. Let's take that one out and put this one in instead. So this was designed so it only has the eight bits, uh, bit seven at the left, bit zero at the right, which is sort of re the readable way around. So if I put that, uh, how's it gonna go there? I think it's sitting on top of some links, which are, for power, let's plug that into some power. I mean, that's immediately much better, isn't it? Because it's getting its power straight off a bus. It's not particularly near there, but yeah, that does work better. So, I mean, if I use these, i make a couple more of these and put them in these positions, that's got gone dim again, isn't it? Let's just try that power thing again. I'm gonna take the power directly off there. Is that brighter? Yeah, you can see immediately that's brighter if I have a direct route to the the ground line coming in. So there's all sorts of power supply <laughs> issues on this. And I've had a thought, and my thought is, why don't I make a little PCB which sits over this midpoint here? And it's got pins, four pins either side, four pins there, four pins there. So it links this bus directly to this bus with a printed circuit board. And that means that the pins going into the breadboard are DuPont pins and they're fatter than these wires. So they do make a better connection. It would be linked then to the two 
pins down here, so it would act as a bridge in all directions. But also, I'm thinking of putting some of these on, which I bought a while back, and these are, well, they're not switches, they're actually wire terminals. And uh, if you put a DVM on here, those two are actually connected together. So there, there are two rows just purely for mounting purposes. And then if you push a wire in here, let's get a bit nearer, you can push down on there. And actually you don't need to, oh, that's a bit of a manky end. You don't need to sort of push these levers down because you can push it down with the wire. But that is really gripped hard. And then you release it by pulling down on that lever and you can pull your wire out. So that looks like it would fit on a PCB sitting in there. And if I made a PCB, you might think it will only go there and there, those two central positions, but actually you could use it there hanging off the edge of the breadboard. You could also have it one there, one down here, another one over here, another one over here. So you could pepper the whole breadboard with them. And I'm sure it would help the wire distribution. And if it didn't, by having these connection points on the tops of these two PCBs, well, all the PCBs, you could actually add additional wires to link them all together if you were having some issues and it might also be worth having some connection points to put all the high current devices, which are the displays, directly onto these little distribution boards and the incoming power directly onto these distribution boards. I think that's worth doing. Now I've used these breadboards um, with their power buses either side. And so of course here where I've got uh, between two rows of breadboards, I've got two power buses which lends itself to this idea of just bridging this whole thing with um, a printed circuit board pushed in there. Uh, I know some people just put one power bus between the breadboards, but I've used two, so I might as well design my PCB to just bridge all of that. Yeah, I think I'm going to start laying something out. I've got to measure these distances because I'm not sure they're uh, multiples of a tenth of an inch. I'll get the calipers on them. I mean, having a little bridging PCB certainly means I could make fewer of these little link wires. Um, yeah, let's measure that distance. Well, after some measurement and eyeballing and parallax compensation and whatever, I think this is 0.43. So I'm going to have to work to hundredths of an inch to get the exact width. And I think this one is 0.46 or 0.36. Uh, between these inner two. So yeah, I think I'll work with that. Let's knock up a PCB. So I'm going to do this as a new PCB, but with no schematic. There's just no point having a schematic. So I've made it 600 mils square. I'm just going to get a pad. Uh, now, what I really want is the snap size set to, I think, 10 mils. So I can do my 4.3 and my 4.6. Uh, alt snap can be five, that's fine. Grid size is 100. So it's going to be a little bit coarse, so it's not too bad. So let's put one there. And now it was going to be, that's going to be four. So I can nudge these out later, but let's just put them in these corners for the moment. Can I put them like that? Yes, I can. They can sit uh, within a tenth of each other without any difficulty. Now in the middle, I want some pads for that switch and I think it was two tenths that way and it's a four-way switch whoops I slipped there so I want roughly that let's just move this one back into position so that's for the switch and then these are for the uh, DuPont pins that will go into the boards now they're in the wrong position so so it looks like 4.4 across here will work. So I'll nudge these out to two out from the grid lines. So that'll be 4.4. And this dim dimension is 4.6. So now I want some more pads. I think that's good enough. Let's link it together with bits of wire. I mean tracks. Now, routing width 10, that's tiny. So I'm going to go really big here, 50, and see what that looks like. So, pause up here. We'll come down to, oh, that is quite big, isn't it? Pause there. 
oh, let's end that track. Neg to neg. Oh, of course, there is something else I've got to do. I've got to link pause to pause and neg to neg. So I'm going to have to do that on top layer. Right, that's it. I think that'll do. Um, I've called it BB Power Dist, Breadboard Power Distribution. I've slightly moved the uh, terminal block pads in the middle. I've slightly reduced the width of the top side tracks just so they didn't virtually touch in the middle. I think that's good enough. I'm going to send that. Oh, let's save it first. Um, send it to JLC PCB and get those made up. Now, just before I finish today, um, I thought I'd break one of these apart. I'm probably not going to use these side entry ones. I'm quite intrigued to see how they work. So let's do that. So getting in nice and close, there are three um, receptacles here on the end piece. And then these are, well, I think there's something in there, but it's hard to see. So I'm going to try and lever these apart. Ah, okay. They are just literally pushed together with pegs in relatively tight holes. So it's just a case of working these apart to lift these pegs out. Ah, okay. Let's have a closer look at that. So this piece sits in here and you can see immediately how the two pins are connected together. But I've got a feeling this piece has to fit under there, but also sit in that slot. That's a bit tricky. Oh, of course it has to compress in order to do that. Oh, that's a bit tricky. So that has to go in there. Yeah, but it's got to go at that angle, hasn't it? Hmm. Right, I think I've done it. I've put the end of the spring, which is this curved bit, into a little slot there. And that's given me a sprung connection there. Now this has to drop in to here, like so, and that goes around that pillar. But I mustn't disconnect the spring piece from its slot. Slightly tricky, getting that to go back in, because it is all sprung. Right, I think that's gone in. Then this sits over the pivot point and there's a little tiny notch that sits in this hole, in this slot. So how am I going to get that to go back on? Oh yeah, that's gone in. And that has to sit over that pivot. I think that's kind of in there. It's one of these things where I wish I hadn't taken it apart now. And then that has to sandwich up against the others. And hope it doesn't all fall apart. Ah, there we go. I think I've done it. And these are all now sprung. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which one I took apart. This third one. Well, anyway, push that in. The lever should deflect when that goes in. And that's tight. Yeah, they're quite interesting, aren't they? Now the purist in me says, well, it's not really a breadboard computer if it's covered in bits of printed circuit board. But breadboard computers don't really work, do they? Because breadboards are so terrible at distributing power and these very high speed signals that it kind of needs a bit of assistance. So with my little middle PCB there with its sprung terminals and plenty of these uh, display modules, this project stands some chance of moving forwards, but um, I'm not sure what I can do without these various PCBs. Anyway, that's enough for today. Cheerio.